uh, a few weeks ago, about two weeks ago, and that will be at uh, verse uh, 26, verse 26. We were talking about seeds and how seeds would be scattered on all kinds of different ground when the sower goes forth to sow. And different kinds of soil will produce different results. But the results that you're looking for uh, happen when the seed falls on good soil. Soil that's been cultivated. Uh, by the right uh, kind of water and the right kind of loosening of the ground. Uh, and uh, this was in a day when the soil was what it was. You didn't, you had plows, but you didn't have tractors and you didn't have irrigation systems and you couldn't uh, really uh, change the rocky soil to. Uh, loose soil except with the uh, hard work over a period of a long time lots of effort but uh, to some extent the soil was what it was and when the seed fell on the ground uh, if it was on rocky soil you didn't get the results you wanted if it was on uh, thorny soil you didn't get the results you want. Of course, you can pull up the thorns and the weeds, and uh, there are things you can do, but it takes time and it takes effort. And when you look at the season right now, uh, the the way the soil soil is uh, determines activity that it has for the seeds. The seed is the good news. It's the gospel. It's the word. Uh, it's the truth that's sown. Uh, as the sower goes forth to scatter the seed. Let's pray together. I fire Father on this day uh, of fatherhood, we come to you as our heavenly father, the, the model of all parenthood, the supreme example of what it means to be loving and caring and wise and true and guiding and to grow us up to reflect your image our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever amen well, let's read the passage together. It is uh, Mark chapter 4, beginning with uh, verse 26. Jesus also said, this is what the kingdom of God is like. A man scatters seed on the ground night and day. Whether he sleeps or gets up, the seed sprouts and grows, though he does not know how. All by itself, the soil produces grain. First the stalk, then the head, then the full kernel in the head. As soon as the grain is ripe, he puts the sickle to it because the harvest has come. Again, he said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like? Or what parable shall we use to describe it? It's like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of seeds on the earth. Yet when planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all garden plants, which such big branches, with such big branches that the birds can perch in its shade. With many similar parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as much as they would understand. He did not say anything to them without using a parable. But when he was alone with his own disciples, he explained everything. Uh, several months ago, I was writing uh, on these readings for today, and this is also the lectionary gospel for today. And I was writing uh, devotionals that uh, need to be written ahead of time. And so I was looking ahead and I was taking the text, the, the last few verses of the passage we just read. And uh, I was also knowing that 
uh, the publication I was writing for uh, wanted a Father's Day message. And so I thought, well, Jesus told stories. What kind of stories did your dad tell? Dad, the storyteller. Uh, dad, the teacher who uh, puts things into, uh, into story form or remembers stories from his past that illustrate the truth he's trying to teach. Uh, that is the origin of dad jokes, I'm sure. Dad jokes, dad stories, dad sorts of things. Well, Jesus is the son of God, the son of the Abba, the son of the Father. But he has learned from the Father, and he comes to tell us these stories about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is like the farmer again, the man who scatters seed, and it, then he goes to bed. Then he goes to bed, and he lets the seed do its work. And he said the farmer doesn't know how it works. He doesn't understand how the seed begins to take root underground, begins to break open. And the roots come out, and then the shoot comes up, and then the fruit is born. He doesn't understand that. And that really strikes me as uh, quite an interesting mystery, because we actually do know a little more about how the seed works today. We understand something that the first century did not understand. We know about DNA. We know that there is encoded in that seed, in, in one of the cells, and in all the cells in that seed, at a level that is really beyond our sight, we could never see without the benefit of microscopes and really sophisticated instrumentation and the ability to study these things. And now we've been decoded the DNA uh, genes and DNA coding that tells the seed what to do, that programs the seed so that under the right conditions, it will do what it will do. But do you know it's still a mystery, how it got there, how it was designed, how it understands the language? I mean, we know a little more. We're, we're learning more every day about these things. But then if you drill down to the atomic level and the subatomic level, I mean, you've gone uh, beneath the grounding of, of biology. Now you're into chemistry and now you're into physics and now you're into quantum physics. There will always be a mystery. There will always be some mystery to this. But none of that is... In Jesus' mind, when he's saying these things, what he's saying is the farmer learned to trust the seed and trust the process. Now, all that's a part of trusting God. You can trust the seed because God made the seed. You can trust the process because God designed the process. What the farmer has done in sowing the seed is release that seed to do what it knows to do itself, what it is designed to do. And today, the lesson is, if the seed is the gospel, the good news, the word of God, the truth of God, the gospel of the kingdom of God. Why not just spread it and release it? Now, we need to do sometimes a little bit of explaining like I'm doing today. 
may and and Jesus reserved that explaining for later with his disciples but also realize that even the unexplained gospel has within it the DNA to do its purpose, to do its work, especially when the Spirit comes and reigns upon it. There it is. You have a truth. You don't even have to fully understand it. You don't have to understand all of how it works. But if you trust it and you put it out there, it will take root in the right places and it will grow roots and it will find nourishment and nutrition and it will sprout and it will do what it do. It will do, <laughs> do what it do. It will do what it does. Trust the seed, trust the process, trust the gospel. You say, well, we believe God, we trust God. Yeah, Jesus also said, believe the gospel. The gospel that leads to repentance, that is life change, change of mind, change of heart, change of lifestyle, change of behavior. Trust that the seed can do all those things. Trust that the gospel can work in people's lives without our manipulation, without our making it happen. Get it out there. Shine the light. Be the salt. Share the gospel. Share the word. You know, um, I still remember uh, words and phrases and stories and jokes that my dad told. They're still working in my life. They're still like seeds. And they're not even the gospel, although he did plant some gospel seeds in my life. These things continue to have life long after the hand that sowed them has withered in the grave. Trust the seed. Trust the process. Trust the gospel. Then Jesus transitions into another story. Similar story, similar theme, carries forth the theme, but it's a different point. The gospel seed, once it's sown, though it be a tiny seed, he, he talks about the mustard seed. He says the mustard seed is the tiniest seed that you sow. Our mustard greens are so good, aren't they? I mean, we modern people think, oh, mustard, uh, yeah, yeah, it makes uh, that wonderful sauce that you put on a hot dog. True that, but the plant that comes from the mustard seed, that plant uh, is a wonderful green. It's a wonderful salad. It's, it's good cooked. It's good raw. It's delicious to just go out on a cold day and pick it and it's kind of crispy and, and chew on it. Looks good. Tastes good. Smells good. But it is good. And it is amazing. A mustard plant from a tiny seed can grow as high as 12 feet. And when the wind blows the right way, it just goes everywhere. You plant mustard in a place where there's a lot of strong wind at the right time when the plant is full of seeding the wind blows the seed goes everywhere it just covers everything so not only do we trust the seed to do its work in the ground and to do the work in the heart of people, but we trust the gospel seed to have a life of its own and to spread and to grow. And we do not become discouraged with small steps, with small seeds, 
with small plans. The implications of the gospel, once it's allowed to take root and grow and bloom and seed, are that it is built into its very nature to be reproductive, to spread itself all over the world, all over the world. And this has been in the history of Christianity, verified and It's the way God's kingdom grows. We trust the seed not only to take root and to bear fruit, but to grow and to spread and to go from small to large. The authentic kingdom of God, the authentic message of Jesus. We have to keep coming back to that. What is it? What is at the core? of the gospel of the kingdom, the gospel of grace, the gospel of love, the gospel of truth, the gospel that liberates people, the gospel that says that if the Son sets you free, you're free indeed, the gospel that uh, says, you know, you could change. In fact, you need to change. You must change. But God is here to help you change, and this gospel message says that you can do so and trust Trust it and trust the one who brings it to you. Trust the Savior who gave his life for you. Trust the Savior who rose, conquering death. Let it grow. Let it grow. Let it grow in your own heart. Let it grow in your own life. Let it grow in your own community. Now Mark comes back with some commentary. He said that Jesus kept teaching. Jesus kept spreading seed wherever he went, beginning at verse 39. Uh, verse, I'm sorry, verse 33. But he spoke in similar parables. That's almost redundant, by the way. A parable is kind of a simile and similar similes. <laughs> a sim but a parable is more of a story than a simile. But he kept speaking that way. And then, as part of his plan, he would bring together those who were with him all the time. There was his grad students, his disciples, and he would teach them more in depth. He would explain to them. Why? Well, because Mark says he taught the crowds in stories as much as they could understand. He fed them as much as they could handle. He didn't try to overload them. He didn't try to overwhelm them. He didn't try to confuse them. But he had strategically chosen some people who were with him all the time and who would hear the stories all the time and who he could explain things in depth to, with this understanding, with this stipulation, they would be charged at the end of his earthly ministry with the responsibility to teach, teach them, to teach everyone else. Go make disciples of all nations, teaching them whatever I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the earth. He was doing this not to make a special class of people who would have special privileges to this information as part of a secret society. He was doing this because he needed a, a group of people who could spread out and teach others who could teach others who could teach others. He was preparing a band, an army of seed sowers whose only weapon was seeds in their hands that they would share with the world, seeds that could be trusted, seeds that would go from small to large. And isn't that what fatherhood and motherhood are about, really? About bringing up a new generation that grows, 
that matures, that learns, that becomes uh, sowers of seeds as well. Isn't that what it's about? Creating more seed sowers who sow seeds, who make a difference in the world. Trust the seed. Trust the process. And trust the capacity of the seed, the kingdom seed, the gospel seed, to go from small to large and change the world. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you, be gracious unto you, and give you peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.